Hi students, welcome to EPG Padshala, an e-content project under National Mission on Education through ICT. I am Mini Ulnat, working as Systems Manager in Cochin University of Science and Technology. Today, I am going to introduce you to Computer Fundamentals. This module is coming under the paper of ICT for Libraries. We live in an information rich world and it has become a necessity for everyone not only to know about computers but be well versed with it. The purpose of this module is to introduce you about the computer system and the fundamentals of computer system. The functions of a computer can be categorized into five. It mainly takes data as input, stores the data and instruction in its memory and use them as and when required. It processes the data and converts it into useful information. It provides the output and controls and manages all the above four functions. Oxford Dictionary defines computer as an electronic device which is capable of receiving data in a particular form and of performing a sequence of operations in accordance with a predetermined but variable set of procedural instructions to produce a result in the form of information or signals. Computer system is an electronic data processing device which does the following. Accept and store an input data, process the data input and output the product. The main advantage of computers in today's world are high speed, accuracy, storage capability, diligence, versatility, reliability, automation, reduction in paperwork and reduction in code. Cost. The following list demonstrates the disadvantages of computers also. There is no intelligence involved. A computer is a machine which has no intelligence of its own to perform any task. Each and every instruction has to be given to the computer. It cannot take any decision on its own. Now second point is a dependency. It can perform function as instructed by the user. It is fully depending on the human being. The third point is the environment. The operating environment should be dust free and suitable for operating. There is no feelings or emotions. It cannot make any judgment based on feeling, taste, experience and knowledge unlike a human being. Now let us see the areas where computer applications is possible. You name it, you have it there. Let it be business, libraries, education, insurance, marketing, healthcare, engineering design, military communication, government application, etc, etc, etc. Now, coming to the various parts, input unit and output unit. What is an input unit? Input devices or input units are used to give data to the computer. This unit makes interface between the user and the computer. The input user translates the human being information into a form understandable by the computer. Take the output unit. What is the purpose of output unit? It is a device with the help of which we get the information from the computer. This unit is a link between the computer and the user. So the output translates the computer's output into the form understandable by the user. Next is the memory or the storage unit. Memory or the storage unit stores all the instructions, data and intermediate results and this supplies the information to the other units of computer as and when needed. It is also known as main memory or primary storage or more commonly used as random access memory or RAM. The size of this memory affects the speed, power and capability of the system as a whole. The memory may be divided into primary memory which constitutes of RAM as well as read-only memory which is a built-in memory of the system and the secondary storage or better known as secondary memory. Central processing unit. CPU or the central processing unit is considered as the brain of the computer. CPU performs all types of data processing operation. It stores data, intermediate results and instructions. It controls the operations of all parts of computers. CPU has the following three components. Constitutes arithmetic logical unit, memory unit and control unit. 
let us see the functions of these units control unit all the functions and the units are controlled by the control unit as the name itself suggests it is responsible for controlling the transfer of data and instruction among other units of the system it manages and coordinates all the units of the computer it obtains the instructions from the memory interprets them and directs the operations of the computer it communicates with the input and output devices for the transfer of data or the results from the storage arithmetic logical unit consists of two subsection arithmetic and logical arithmetic section the function of arithmetic section is to perform all the arithmetic operations namely addition subtraction multiplication and division the complex operations are done by making repetitive use of these primary operations coming to logic section the function of logic section is to perform logic operations such as comparing selecting matching and merging of data the following are the other important input device which may be used in the computer system like keyboard mouse joystick light pen trackball scanner graphic table microphone magnetic ink card reader or micr we have seen the micr checks ocr that is optical character reader barcode reader and optical mark reader coming to the output devices the following are some of the important output devices which are used in computer system monitors graphic plotters printers when you talk about the printers there are two important types of printers one we call it as impact printer and the other one is a non impact printer take the impact printer there are again two categories of impact printers character printers and line printer character printer may be again categorized as dot matrix printers or dmp and daisy wheel printers line printers are further classified as a drum printer and chain printer take the case of non impact printers the printers that print the characters without striking against the ribbon or onto the paper are called the non impact printers these printers print a complete page at a time and also called as page printers basically this is laser printers and inkjet printers belong to this category the main characteristic of the non impact printers are it is very fast very less noisy quality of print is also very high the size of the printer is also very less small now coming to the memory computer memory is just like a human brain it is used to store data and instructions computer memory is a storage space in the computer where data to be processed and instruction required for the processing are stored there are three categories of memory cache memory primary memory or the main memory and the secondary memory first we'll see what cache memory is cache memory is a high speed semiconductor memory which can speed up the cpu it acts as a buffer between cpu and main memory it is used to hold those parts of data and a program which are most frequently used by the cpu the parts of data and programs are transferred from disk to cache memory by the operating system from where cpu can access them the advantage of cache memory is that it is faster than main memory and consumes less access time as compared to the main memory it stores a program that can be executed within a short period of time and for temporary use but the disadvantage is it is very expensive and the capacity is limited now cut it the case of primary memory or the main memory primary memory holds only those data and instruction on which computer is currently working it has a limited capability and data gets lost when the power is switched off it is generally made up of semiconductor devices and the memory is not as fast as registers the data and instructions required to be processed earlier reside in main memory it is divided into two sub categories ram and rom random access memory and read only memory the characteristics of the main memory are these are all basically the semiconductor memory it is also volatile memory that is the data is lost in case power is switched off and it is working but it's a base main memory and is a working memory of the computer it is faster than all the secondary memories and a computer cannot run without primary memory coming to the secondary memory 
this memory this type of memory is also known as external memory or the non volatile or the permanent storage it is slower than main memory but these are used for storing the data or information permanently the contents of the secondary memories are transferred to the main memory and the cpu can access it a typical example of secondary memory is the disk cd rom dvd or the hard disk the characteristics of the secondary memory these are magnetic or optical memories it is a non volatile memory but it's slower than primary memory we will see the main memory ram in detail random access memory ram constitutes the internal memory of the cpu for storing data program and program results we can retrieve the information from this memory at random and extremely fast but it is expensive that is ram is volatile and the data stored is lost when we switch off the system or if there is a power failure there are two types of ram one is called the static ram or s ram and dynamic ram or d ram coming to the other primary memory that is rom stands for read only memory the memory from which we can only read but cannot write on it this type of memory is a non volatile and the information is stored permanently during the manufacture rom stores instructions that is required to start a computer when electricity is first turned on this is this operation is known as bootstrapping certain instructions are prefetched etched into the system, uh, rom at the time of manufacturing now following are the various types of roms available one is a mask rom this very first roms were hardwired device that contain the pre programmed set of data or instructions these kinds of roms are known as mask rom and it is less expensive we have prom or programmable read only memory that can be modified only once by a user it can be programmed only once and not then not erasable then there is eprom erasable programmable read only memory eprom can be erased by exposing it to ultraviolet light for a duration of up till 40 minutes there is eeprom that is electrically erasable and programmable read only memory where which is programmed and erased electrically it can be erased and reprogrammed about 10000 times both erasing and programming takes about 4 to 10 milliseconds that's about the memory now we'll see what is a motherboard a motherboard or the main board system board is a main printed circuit board or pcb found in computers and other expandable system it holds many of the crucial electronic components of the system this includes central processing unit cpu memory and provide connectors for other peripherals the motherboard serves as a single platform to connect all parts of the computer together we'll see the memory units higher storage units are as follows like how you uh, how do you store your information or what is the measure of information we store information in terms of bits and bytes a one or zero is called a bit that is binary digit one kilobyte is 1024 bytes which is usually the notation is kb 1 mb or megabyte is 1024 kilobytes the higher noting is gigabytes 1 gb is about 1024 mb then comes terabyte 1 terabyte is 1024 gigabytes then goes to petabyte 1 petabyte is about 1024 terabytes that is how the information is stored another important unit of computer is a port what is a port computer port is a physical docking point using which an external device can be connected to the system external devices are connected through using cables and ports these are the slots on the motherboard into which the cable of the external device is plugged in examples when i say external devices uh, it includes the attachment via uh, ports which includes mouse keyboard monitor microphone speakers everything some of the important types of ports available on the motherboard are 
serial port which is mainly used for external modems and like the, the older computer mouse also used the serial port parallel ports these are used for scanners and printers and ps2 ports again for the earlier keyboards and mouse now we have the usb or the universal serial bus port which can connect all kinds of external usb devices like your external hard disk your printer your scanner your mouse keyboard etc vga port connects the monitor to a computer's video card the power connector connects to the computer's power cable that plugs into the power bar or the wall socket there is a 5 wire port which transfers large amount of data at very fast speed which this connects the camcorders and similar video equipments to the computer here the data travels at the rate of 400 to 800 mbps this is basically invented by apple there are three variants like 4 pin 5y 400 connector 6 pin 5y 400 connector or 9 pin 5y 800 connector modem uh, the connects the pcs to the telephone network there is an ethernet port which connects the network to the high speed internet then the digital video interface or dvi port connects a flat panel lcd monitor to a computer's high end video graphics card then there are other sockets which connects microphone speakers to the sound card etc that is about the hardware now let us see what the software is software when you say computer software it's a set of programs which are designed to perform a well defined function a program is a sequence of instructions written to solve a particular problem there are basically two types of software one we term it as system software and the other one is the application software some comparison between the features of the system software and the application software can be given as like system software is close to the system and very fast in execution whereas application software is more closer to the user that is the user has got some application with it it is easy to design uh, system software is difficult to design whereas application software is more of interactive uh, the user need not understand the complexities of the system software and it is very less interactive it is difficult to manipulate and it is generally written in a low level language whereas application software is a mostly written in high level language it is easy to understand very easy to manipulate and the size is also bigger compared with the software uh, system software the number system that is followed in computer let us see how this information storage is happening earlier we saw the bit and byte so numerical data may be stored as bits and bytes but when we type some letters or words the computer has to translate them into numbers computers can understand only numbers so how will it translate this so computer understand positional number system whereas where there are only few symbols called digits and these symbols represent different values depending on the position they occupy radix or base is defined as the total number of digits available in this number system decimal number system has base 10 as it uses 10 digits from 0 to 9 in decimal number system the successive positions to the left of the decimal point represent units tens hundreds thousands and so on now coming to the binary number system it uses just two digits 0 and 1 and therefore it is called the base 2 number system each position in the binary number represents power of base 2 another number system we use is octal number system which uses eight digits that is from 0 to 7 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 it is also called as base 8 number system each position in an octal number represents power of the base hexadecimal number system uses 10 digits and 6 letters that is in total 16 from 0 to 9 then followed by a b c d e f letter represents numbers starting from 10 that is a is equal to 10 b is equal to 11 c is equal to 12 d 13 e represents 14 and f represent 15 that is about the number system we will see what is a data now what is data data can be defined as the representation of facts concepts 
all instructions in a formalized manner, which should be suitable for communication, interpretation, or processing by human or electric electronic machine. Data is represented with the help of characters like alphabets, like A to Z, can be capital or small, digits 0 to 9, or special characteristics plus, minus, and similar. The data is basically divided into numeric and non numeric data. What is information? Information is organized or classified data so that it has some meaningful value to the receiver. Data is a raw information actually. Information is the processed data on which the decisions and actions are based. For the decisions to be meaningful, the processed data must qualify the following characteristics. That is, it should be timely, that is the information should be available as and when required. It should be accurate, the information provided should be accurate. Completeness, the information should be complete in all manner. That is about the information, data and information. So processed data is information. Computer networking is an important area which needs special mention due to the wide application of networks in almost all fields of human life. A computer network is a system in which multiple computers are connected to each other to share information and resources. The main characteristic of a computer network or the why we are networking first is used to communicate, second one to share the resources from one system to another. It creates the files and stores them in one computer, access those from the other computer connected over the network. Resources can be shared like for example connect a printer and scanner or a fax machine to one computer within the network. Let the other computers of the network also make use of the machines available. So that is the main advantage of the network. How, what is the requirement for setting up such a network? The minimum requirement includes cables, router, network interface cards, switches and hubs. So a computer network is a system in which multiple computers are connected to each other to share information and resources. This is basically to communicate and share resources in different manner. So for creating a network, we need a hardware setup of network cables, routers, network interface card, switches and hubs. We are living in a network world and internet is the platform by which we are communicating with each other. With this, let me conclude this module on fundamentals of computing. Thank you. Thank you very much.